will be the final lecture on solving second order circuits. This is lecture 3-1, the first lecture of week three. So far we've looked at solving second order differential equations. We've looked at solving second order circuits by deriving the differential equation. And we've looked at overdamped and critically damped responses. So in today's lecture, we're going to do two different analyses of circuits that are going to have underdamped responses. These are the most difficult for students to master because sometimes dealing with the sinusoids and the phase angle and the frequency makes it a little bit more complicated. So as before, for this circuit, the switch moves from position A to position B at t equals zero. We know that it has been at position A for a long time. And the reason this is important, because we can assume that the circuit has reached steady state DC conditions. So we use that t equals zero minus to find the initial voltage across the capacitor and the initial current through the inductor. And we're gonna find the output voltage V of T. So the first thing we're going to do is let's draw the circuit at T equals zero minus. The switch is at position A and we assume con DC conditions and we're going to find V of zero minus and we're also going to find I of zero minus. And what you'll see here is that I of T is the current through the inductor. <clears throat> so we have a 10 volt source. We have a 12 volt source, a one ohm resistor, a two ohm resistor. We have an open circuit to model the capacitor under DC conditions and label that V of zero minus. And then over here, we have a short circuit for the inductor, the 10 volts, and a 10 ohm resistor. Now, since this is an open circuit where the inductor was attached, I of zero minus is equal to zero amps. Since V of zero minus is the same as the voltage across the two ohm resistor, you can use the voltage divider. So V of zero minus is equal to two over three times 12, which equals eight volts. Next, we draw the circuit at T equals zero plus, and we use this circuit to derive the second order differential equation. So I now have the capacitor, one over 40 farads, with V of T across it. I have the 2.5 Henry inductor, the 10 ohm resistor, and the 10 volt source. Since when the switching happens, this is now my input, X of T is equal to 10 U of T, a is equal to 10, so the 10 volt source is my input, and V of T is the output. Since voltage for capacitors is continuous across all time, V of zero plus is still equal to eight volts, and current is continuous for inductors, I of zero plus is equal to zero amps. And now we're going to write the KVL equation I of T. We have X of T, the input, would equal to the voltage drop across the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. So we're actually going to assume counterclockwise to show that drops equal rises. So X of T would be equal to 10 I of T plus 2.5 the I of T dt plus V of T, the voltage across the capacitor. We need a second equation in order to solve this problem, and that's going to be the relationship between I of T and C of T. So I of T is the current through the capacitor. So I of T is equal to C dV of T dT, which is one over 40 dV of T dT. And finally, we're gonna substitute equation two into equation one. When we substitute equation two into equation one, we get one over four dV of T dT plus one over 16, the second derivative dV of T dT plus V of T equals X of T. We now use algebra to rewrite that last equation and we get the second derivative of V of T plus four 
dv of t dt plus 16 v of t equals 16 x of t. Comparing coefficients, we get that omega n is equal to 4 radians per second, k is equal to 1, and 2 zeta omega n is equal to 4. So zeta is equal to 1 half. Since zeta is less than 1, we have an underdamped response. So the next thing we do is we find the roots of the characteristic polynomial r squared plus 4r plus 16 equals 0. We can use the quadratic formula in order to find the roots, and we find that the roots are r is equal to negative 2 plus or minus j 2 on the square root of 3. If we compare this to our general form for the roots, we get that r is equal to negative sigma plus or minus j omega d, and now we can write the general form for the voltage. V of t is equal to ka, where k is equal to 1 and, 10, and a is equal to 10, so we have 10 plus ce to the sigma t, that's negative 2t, sine of omega dt, so that is 2 on the square root of 3t, plus theta, and now we have to use the initial conditions in order to find c and theta. The first initial condition is that v of 0 is equal to 10 plus c sine of theta, and this equals 8. And we can rearrange this as c sine of theta equals negative 2. So now let's look at the initial current equation. The initial current equation is that i of t, which is equal to c dv of t dt, would be equal to 1 over 40 times the derivative of the voltage, so that's negative 2 ce to the minus 2t sine of 2 on the square root of 3t plus theta plus 2 on the square root of 3 ce to the negative 2t cosine of 2 on the square root of 3t plus theta. Now, we know that the initial current is equal to 0, so we can just write this as dv of t dt evaluated at t equals 0, which equals negative 2 c, the sine of theta, plus 2 on the square root of 3, c, the cosine of theta, and that equals 0. We can rearrange this and solve for the tangent of theta and get that the tangent of theta is equal to 1.732. We find the arctangent of that equation and get that theta is equal to 60 degrees. And then we can solve for c. c is equal to negative 2 divided by the sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to negative 2.31. And we are finally ready to write the final equation. V of t. is equal to 10 minus 2.31 e to the negative 2t sine of 2 on the square root of 3t plus 60 degrees. And since this is the voltage for t greater than or equal to 0, we multiply it by u of t. All right, let's work on the final example of today's lecture. For the following circuit, the switch has been at position A for a long time and moves to position B at t equals 0. Find the output voltage, V of t, for t greater than or equal to 0. In order to simplify our work, we're going to do something here, and we're going to make V of t actually the voltage across the capacitor instead of the voltage across the inductor in series with the voltage source. 
What this really does for the problem is it greatly simplifies our work. And what you will find is once you find V of T, you can then use KVL or KCL in order to find V naught of T because it will be the sum of the voltage across the 12K resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. But either way, we have to find the voltage across the capacitor first. So we're going to do that. So as usual, the first thing we do is analyze the circuit at T equals zero minus where the switch is at position A and we have DC conditions and we're going to find V of zero minus and find I of zero minus. So remember I of zero minus is going to be the current flowing to the left through the inductor. So when I redraw the circuit, I have a 28 volt, volt source, the four kilo ohm resistor, the 24 kilo ohm is not connected because it's an open circuit. So from the four kilo ohm, I have the 12 kilo ohm. I have the inductor modeled as a short circuit with the current I of zero minus flowing through it. I have the 20 volt source, and then right in between the four kilo ohm and 12 kilo ohm resistors, I have an open circuit here, V of zero minus. So the way to solve this problem is to do KVL. And if you write a KVL equation around this loop, you're going to have 28 plus 20 is equal to the voltage drop across the two series resistors. So that's going to be 4K plus 12K times I of zero minus, and I of zero minus is equal to three milliamps. So then V of zero minus would be equal to four K times three milli minus 28 which is 12 minus 28. So V of zero minus is equal to negative 16 volts. The next step is to analyze the circuit at T equals zero plus in order to derive the second order differential equation. Remember voltage is continuous for capacitors. So V of zero plus is negative 16 volts and I of zero plus is positive three milliamps. So now I redraw the circuit with the switch at position B, which disconnects the 28 volt source and the four kilo ohm resistor. So I'm going to have the 24 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the 12 kilo ohm resistor, the 200 millihenry inductor, the 20 volt source, and the eight nanofarad capacitor. One thing that will greatly simplify my analysis is to reduce the 24 kilo ohm and the 12 kilo ohm resistors in parallel into their equivalent resistance. So I can replace these two resistors with one eight kilo ohm resistor. And now what I'm going to do, remember the output is V of T, the input is the 20 volt source, so X of T equals 20 U of T and A is equal to 20 and I of T is the current through the 200 millihenry inductor and the eight kilo ohm resistor. So I write a KVL equation and the KVL equation is V of T, the voltage across the capacitor plus eight K I of T, the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the inductor 0 0.2 the I of T dt and that equals the input which is x of t. This is my first equation. My second equation is the relationship between i and t and v of t. The current through the capacitor i of t is equal to 8 nano d v of t dt. The next step is to substitute equation 2 into equation 1. And by substituting equation two into equation one, we get that we get 1.6 nano, the second derivative of the voltage, 
plus 64 micro, the first derivative of the voltage, plus V of T equals X of T, and dividing both sides of the equation by 1.6 nano to get a leading coefficient of one on the second derivative, we get the second derivative of the voltage, plus 40K, the first derivative of the voltage, plus 625 milli, V of T is equal to 625 milli X of T. So when we solve for K, Z, and omega N, we get that omega N is equal to 25 kiloradians per second. K is equal to one. And Zeta is equal to 0 0.8. Since zeta is less than one, we have an underdamped response. As usual, the next step is to find the characteristic polynomial r squared plus 40kr plus 625 mega equals zero. And we use the quadratic equation to solve, so we have r is equal to negative 20k plus or minus j 15k. So the form for an underdamped response is v of t equals ka 20 plus ce to the negative 20kt sine of 15kt plus theta and the initial condition for the voltage is that V of zero is equal to 20 plus C sine of theta. And that equals negative 16. So C sine of theta is equal to negative 36. So now we need to use the initial current in order to find C or theta. So I of T is equal to C dV of T dT. So it's going to be 8 nano times the first derivative of the voltage, dV of t dt, which equals 8 nano times the quantity, negative 20kc, e to the negative 20kt, sine of 15kt plus theta. Plus 15kc, e to the negative 20kt, cosine of 15 kt plus theta and i of zero would be equal to negative 20 kc c sine theta plus 15 kc cosine of theta and remember we found that that was three milli so it's three milli divided by eight nano. Solving this equation for 15 K C cosine of theta is equal to three milli over eight nano plus 20 K C sine of theta and since we know that the C sine of theta is equal to negative 36, we can solve this equation for C cosine of theta, which is equal to negative 23. And so now we have C cosine of theta is negative 23, C sine of theta is negative 36. So we can get that the tangent of theta is equal to 36 over 23, and the arc tangent of that equation gives us that theta is equal to 57 degrees. And C is equal to negative 36 divided by the sine of 57 degrees. So C is equal to negative 42.72. And finally, the answer. V of T is equal to 20 
minus 42.72 e to the negative 20 kt sine of 15 kt plus 57 degrees and you multiply that by u of t. This concludes today's lecture and the series on solving second order circuits. Thank you.